Welcome to Win the Day from Back to the Bible. I'm your coach, Pastor Nat, and today we're going to talk about forgiving generously. Whenever we head to Kansas City, we always make a quick pit stop in Nebraska City for a few sweet treats. My kids will buy a giant pack of gum, my one son will buy some Gardettos, and usually one kid's going to buy gummy bears or some other kind of candy. But here is what's interesting. When one brother asks the other for a bite or a piece, you know what I hear. No, you should have grabbed your own candy, your own treat. <laughs> How insulting this is for me as the giver of these abundant gifts. They are so stingy. It prompts me to either ask for repayment or a quick transfer from their hands to mine. Now, we balk at such behavior. But if we're not careful, we will do the same thing with forgiveness. Well, what do I mean? Uh, listen to Jesus' final words on effective praying in Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 14. For if you forgive others their offenses, your heavenly Father will forgive you as well. But if you don't forgive others, your Father will not forgive your offenses. What you may not realize is that Jesus is punching a point about forgiveness that he actually made in verse 12. Now, here in verse 14, it tends to trip people up because it sounds like Jesus is threatening to remove our own forgiveness if we are stingy with giving it. But this is not Jesus' point. What Jesus is doing is reminding us that for people who are freely forgiven to withhold generous forgiveness of others, it's wrong, and it is insulting to God. God, in reasons that I will never understand, offers free forgiveness of sins to a bunch of messed up sinners who actually hate God in our minds and in our actions. That just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, if someone slandered me each and every day, they vandalized my home, <laughs> they beat up my wife, they abused my kids. The last thing I would consider would be loving that person. I just can't imagine freely forgiving that person and then giving them the keys to the mansion. But that is exactly what Christ has done. So for us to receive such a lavish offer of mercy and grace, <laughs> but to withhold it, from someone else shows one of two things. First, that we're not actually saved, or we're showing that we have a desire to be disciplined by God. Friend, we have been freely forgiven. Therefore, we must, out of gratitude for our own salvation, forgive others freely. Did you know that forgive literally means to hurl away. It's throwing it in the garbage and watching the dump truck take it away. When we forgive, it's gone. It will never come back again. That is real love. That is the love that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 13. This kind of love, this kind of forgiveness is evidence of our salvation. So here's my challenge for you today. I want you to forgive fully and freely. Who is it in your life that you've chosen not to forgive? Uh, what offense seems too great to hurl away? I want you to confess it to God, but then I want you to ask God for help. Ask God to show you and overwhelm you with his scandalous love. And then I want you to throw away the bitterness and unforgiveness. I want us to bathe in the forgiveness of God. And then when we do, you know it, we will win the day.